Hi, and welcome back to Get Fit Guy. This is Coach Kevin Dunn. And I feel like the name of this podcast should really just be changed to the Critical Thinking Podcast because it feels like every week all I'm doing is swimming against the tide of influencers and non-critical thinkers who share a bunch of pseudoscientific claptrap, which everyone else seems to fall for, and I have to be here like it's Groundhog Day debunking everything. This week, when I had a look at the Get Fit Guy emails, there was an email from someone that wanted to come onto the show as a guest to talk about such pseudoscientific stuff. I'll read the email out to you. Greetings, Dr. Jonathan. Okay, so first of all, no one talks like that apart from Mr. Spock. Greetings is not how you start an email unless you're from the planet Vulcan. Second of all, Dr. Jonathan hasn't even hosted this podcast for like a year and a half. So this guy is obviously not an avid listener anyway. Greetings, Dr. Jonathan. Hope you're doing well. I'm reaching out to you today because Joe Rogan has finally come around to the benefits of red light therapy, and he's been talking about it a lot on his show. So first of all, this is just a massive amount of Aristotle's rhetoric. And there's also the voice from authority fallacy, which is an informal fallacy, but still fallacious nonetheless. And I literally couldn't care less about what Joe Rogan talks about on his show. Anyway, this is great news for the red light therapy scene in general, and great news for other podcasts too. There's a huge spike in people searching for red light therapy information, and podcasts are a great way to get the message out. If you're interested, I'd love to get on your show. We can talk about red light therapy and hopefully keep the wave of interest going. I think right now is a great time to ride the Rogan wave because you probably know that when he talks about something, it goes viral. Let me know if you're interested and we can make it happen. Brian. Well, Brian, to quote Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 3, Line 87, No. I will, however use this opportunity to save my listeners from this. Disclaimer, if you thought I was wrong about 5G, you might want to stop listening now. As usual, let's have a little bit of background about what red light therapy is. To put it simply, red light therapy, also known as red LED light therapy, or red and near-infrared light therapy, is a type of treatment in which LEDs or light-emitting diodes emit light of specific wavelengths, usually between 630 and 750 nanometers. And the sun also emits red light, the red light being most prevalent in the morning and at sunset. So let's have a look at the health claims of this. And if you've been following this podcast for a while, you'll know that usually the more things that an intervention claims to cure, the less things it actually cures. So let's see the claims. So apparently red light therapy will result in improved skin health, muscle recovery, mental clarity, athletic and sexual performance, pain management, and sleep. Hmm. So Let's just talk a little bit more about being skeptical or cynical for a moment because, you know, human existence is on a spectrum and skepticism is at one end of that spectrum and on the other end of the spectrum we have total gullibility. I think a healthy dose of skepticism, especially in the face of marketing and influencing social media, is always a good way to protect yourself from being caught out. I mean, you only have to look at the email that I got about this to see that pretty much the reason he wants to make a podcast about red light therapy is because someone else has made one, so therefore it'll be good for clicks. You know, it's just not reality. It's not objective. And I've talked on this podcast before in the past about how to think critically about things, how to evaluate data. So I'd go back and look for those podcasts if you are one of the people that perhaps isn't really very good at doing that. Just to make it clear as well, you know, being a skeptic doesn't mean that you ignore any science or evidence that goes against biases you may have. I could look at this and say, red light therapy, what a load of rubbish. And then I could go and find evidence to the contrary. 
Spoiler alert, I didn't. But I'm still open to the idea that I might. So let's move on and talk about red light therapy, which is also known in a bit more scientific lingo as photobiomodulation. This was really discovered kind of by accident. Because in 1965, doctors in Boston had published the results of experiments they were doing in which they showed that lasers could be used to treat cancerous tumors. And a Hungarian doctor took notice of this and wanted to try and, you know, replicate the results. The problem was that his lasers were much less powerful than the ones being used in the study. And the tumors in his lab rats were not affected at all. However, what did happen was that the skin surrounding the tumors, which had been shaved off in order for the doctor to have a better observation on tumor diameter, well, that skin began to heal in a much accelerated way. And just like how the microwave was discovered accidentally by a scientist having a chocolate bar melt in his pocket, this Hungarian physician had now stumbled upon a finding that would dramatically move his career forwards. This laser wasn't, you know, the type that was going to shoot down incoming spacecraft and it didn't burn tissue away, but low-level laser therapy did show promise not for destroying unwanted tissue, but stimulating healing of tissue. All right, so pretty reasonable. And we do know that there's nothing silly about the idea that light influences us as organisms. I mean, our entire circadian rhythm, which is so important for health, is influenced almost entirely by light. Our skin also makes vitamin D from cholesterol when it's exposed to UV light. And our entire visual system is a complex arrangement dedicated to translating incoming light into information that our brain can understand to allow us to interact with the world around us. So the human body definitely needs light in order to survive. But what about these claims that red light therapists are making that plugging a red colored light bulb into your sitting room lamp will increase longevity, improve your immunity and increase mental clarity. Well, scientific literature is actually full of studies which were looking at applications for red light therapy for the treatment of depression, the rehabilitation of strokes, Alzheimer's disease, the improvement of athletic performance, and believe it or not, it was even speculated that red light could be used to treat COVID-19. However, these studies were all carried out on laboratory animals. They're not clinical evidence. They're just preclinical trials. And of course, it's super appealing to think that when we do something on a mouse in a laboratory, that it will then happen when we scale it up and subject humans to the same treatment. Unfortunately, humans are just not large mice. And nowhere is this kind of more eye-opening than when you look at the data that we have on what actually happens in the space between preclinical labs and surveys of clinical trials in 2014 specifically looked at how many of these trials on animals eventually made it through to become pharmaceutical drugs. And the number was microscopically tiny. The number that made it from labs just to human trials was tiny. And then from trials to market was only one in 10. So whilst on a mouse, it might look certain that red light therapy may do something for you, the odds of this holding when it comes to be tested on humans just doesn't look good in terms of the statistics. We have to come to terms with the fact that, first of all, yeah, I don't think things should be getting tested on animals, but we also need to just adjust our expectations that animal studies don't translate to human beings. Even the most positive review on red light therapy, which was a 2016 study, noted that most of the studies that were being done um, on the influence of red light on wound healing uh, were performed in mice, rats, or ex vivo models. Ex vivo model being where cells are taken out of an animal to be experimented on externally. Uh, and even a clinical trial which was done on human beings using photobiomodulation to treat strokes in increasingly larger human trials went from working for a small subset of patients in trial one to entirely failing in trial three to the point where the experiments were 
terminated prematurely for basically being completely futile. Now, one of the influencers that I've seen talking a lot about red light therapy has been talking about it working via the mitochondria. Mitochondria are powerhouses in the cells, and all animals, plants, and fungi contain mitochondria. These generate the energy that we need. Mitochondria have chains of proteins that juggle electrons around. One of them contains uh, metals, uh, heme iron and copper, which are light absorbing in the red and infrared spectrum. So when we shine a red light on living tissue, it's absorbed by mitochondria. Uh, This then apparently results in some kind of cascade, a biological domino effect that will benefit every part of the organism. Your brain gets more blood flow, your cells get more energy, your genes are activated left, right, and center. It's a biological cure-all storm. But this is where another kind of biology lesson comes into play. We have 70,000 unique proteins, some distinguished even further by modifications within that set. Um, Kind of impressive array of characters that all have to work together. And if it were true that red light therapy created an enzymatic activation within mitochondria, um, it doesn't mean that that's going to make it through to your body as a whole because your body has a whole set of different redundancies that are in place to actually maintain things the way they are right now, homeostasis. So something happening to you at the cellular level doesn't mean that it will impact the organism as a whole. We just have to look at consciousness to know that that's the case because as a whole organism, I have consciousness, but my individual cells don't. So the reverse also being the case. You know, shining some light into your eyeballs doesn't mean that you're being healed. The whole thing really fails what we call in philosophy the teapot test. Now, the Cambridge philosopher and mathematician Bertrand Russell formulated this test to illustrate what we call burden of proof. And it goes like this. If I were to assert without proof that a teapot too small to be seen by any telescope orbits the sun somewhere between Earth and Mars, I cannot expect anyone to believe me solely based on the premise that I cannot be proven wrong. And that's the thing with all these therapies, is that they fail Russell's teapot. I cannot prove that a therapy doesn't work, but that doesn't mean that it does work, right? So burden of proof always lies on the claimant. So where's the evidence to back up the claims for the benefits of red light therapy, hexagonal water, and so on? There is none. So I remain skeptical, especially when red light therapists make outrageous claims that it will literally heal everything that you've got going. And I also don't know why you'd need red light therapy if you can also get red light from the sun at um, daybreak and sundown, right? It contains the exact same wavelength of light within it. So take home message, Russell's teapot. Learn it, apply it, stop listening to influencers and Joe Rogan. If you have a question or just want to say hi, email me at getfitguy at quickanddirtytips.com and you too could be featured on the show. Don't forget to share the podcast with your friends or favorite red light therapists. Get Fit Guy is a Quick and Dirty Tips podcast. Thanks to the team at Quick and Dirty Tips, Morgan Christensen, Holly Hutchins, Davina Tomlin, Cameron Lacey, and our new director of podcasts, Brandon Getchis. And, you know, also thanks to me because I never get thanked for this every week. So I'm sliding myself in there. Leave me a voicemail at 510-353-3104 or send me an email at getfitguy at quickanddirtytips.com. For more information about the show, visit quickanddirtytips.com or check out the show notes in your podcast app. 